Can you tell I'm excited about today? I am super excited about this. T2, the forgotten hero of thyroid hormones, the ability to burn fat and increase energy may lie in the power of T2. And we are going to break down the studies today. We're breaking down the science. We're breaking down the biochemistry so that you can know and understand exactly how T2 is working in your body. Now, let's start off with a couple of things, just basic biology, right? Let's go back to basic biology. So we know with thyroglobulin, when we're talking about T3, the active thyroid hormone, there are three iodine molecules attached to the hormone. T4 has four, T2 has two. Now, yes, there is a T1, but we see that it's not really all that potent. It doesn't, it hasn't been studied. It doesn't have a strong effect on the body, but T2 does, and it has been studied and it does have a strong effect on the body. So with that thyroglobulin, two iodine atoms, the body is using these hormones, the thyroid hormone. It uses it by pulling off the iodine atoms until you're left with an inactive protein that then the body eliminates. So we go from four to three to two to one, boom, done. And it's out. We know that T4 is inactive, and this might be a repeat for many of you, but it's worth going over. T4 is inactive. It has to convert to T3. It has to have that iodine molecule pulled off of it to convert over to T3 in order for it to be active because you do have receptor sites on your cell for T3, but we also have receptor sites for T2, and that's what science is showing us now that that T2 hormone can attach to your cell and have very, very powerful effects. Now, T2 is actually called the long-term. It's 3,5-diodo-L-thyronine. Now, there are all other forms of T2. There's a 3,3 version. I forget what the other one is. 3,5 squared, something like that. But we are talking about the 3,5-diodo-L-thyronine. That is what has been studied in the literature that is what we're talking about today. And that is what is available in supplement form, but we'll break all that down at the end here. So first of all, T2. In these studies, it is shown to be one of the biggest regulators of basal metabolic rate. Basal metabolic rate, BMR. That is what your body is doing at rest. That's the amount of fat and energy your body is using in a rested state. So if you take away exercise, and I don't recommend not exercising, and I don't recommend sitting around being a, a lazy blob, I recommend movement. But even if you wanted to sit around and be a lazy blob, T2 can actually come in and increase your base of metabolic rate. So you can be burning fat, burning energy, while literally sitting there doing absolutely nothing. So it's increasing your basal metabolic rate. Studies show that it is even more potent, I know you're going to be absolutely shocked when I say this, more potent than T3 when it comes to increasing basal metabolic rate. Now, let me break this down. Don't think that I'm a hater of T3. I'm on T3 only. Many of my patients are. I do not believe in using T4 only to treat thyroid patients in any way, shape, or form. I met a woman last week. I've known her for years. I just haven't seen her in many, many, many years. She goes, oh, I'm on T4 and I'm good. Well, She's maybe 45, 40 pounds overweight. I don't know. I, I wouldn't call that good, but hey, if that's your jam, that's cool. T4 only rarely, if ever, works. And especially if you've had a thyroidectomy, partial thyroidectomy, radioactive iodine, you should not be on T4 only. But when we're looking at T3, T3 is powerful. I want you all to be on a combination of T4 and T3 if you have a thyroid problem, if you had a thyroidectomy, if you had radioactive iodine. Absolutely, 100%. We need that combination. Now, the ratio of T4 to T3 and what's going to work for you, that is individualized. That is personalized. That's why it takes working with a practitioner to really figure this out. But the beauty is you don't have to go and find a doctor and beg for T2 like you do with T3. So T2 has a more potent effect than T3 on your basal metabolic rate. And why do we know this? So when we're looking at T3, T3 is the active thyroid hormone. It has a lot of power. Like I said, every single cell in your body has a receptor site on it for T3, including your brain, including your heart, every single cell. 
But here's the thing. T3 does increase metabolism, but it does not decipher between burning muscle and burning body fat. So it does burn a little bit of both. Now, do we take that? Yeah. I mean, could I be maybe 10 pounds heavier in muscle? I mean, I go to the gym and I lift heavy shit, just like I tell you to do. I make sure that my GSD hormone testosterone is in the optimal range. But also, I struggle to get those nice cap shoulders that I would always see on ladies that were really athletic or they were competing. I was like, oh, damn, that looks so good, right? So maybe I could have those cap shoulders if I was not on as much T3 as I'm on. But what would be the the exchange? The exchange might be an extra 10 to 20 pounds of fat. So I will take the little bit of muscle burning for the little bit of fat burning, for a lot of fat burning that I get with T3. But with T2, it leaves muscle alone. It actually is muscle protective. So it goes right for body fat and specifically brown adipose tissue. So we have T2 coming in. It directly affects body fat and it's a slow burn. It's not a fast burn. So when we use T2, and this is in the literature, it's in the literature. This is not me making stuff up. When we use T2, it does not produce thyromimetic effects. It has no effect on the cardiovascular system and it has no effect on TSH, free T3, and free T4. So it's acting independently and it's not affecting your thyroid hormones. Now, long-term use, I'm going to say, and this is not in the studies, this is just common sense. And when we think about the feedback loop and the HPT access, common sense says that your TSH is most likely going to go down a little bit when you're using T2, just like it does with long-term use of T4 or long-term use of T4 and T3 together, you're going to get a little bit of a suppression of the TSH. But immediately, and this is going to take a while, because there are no thyromimetic effects of T2. So we're at rest. We bring in T2. We see an increase in the basal metabolic rate. And then we see that T2 directly targeting fat. Now, your brown adipose tissue is the most metabolically active tissue. So when we think about the brown and the white, adipose means fat. When we think brown and white, you have to think white is that squishy, mushy, clogging up our organs, the stuff that we can grab that we really want to lose, that's making our clothes tight. And the brown adipose tissue is the more protective around your organs fat, but it's always metabolically active. It's always helping your muscles burn fat. It's helping your body burn fat. Brown fat burns fat. So we're increasing and actually stimulating the brown adipose tissue with T2. So, you know, I I know this is going to be, your jaws are going to be on the floor. I get it. I get it. T2 is actually more relevant than T3 or T4. Now we know it's more relevant than T4. Come on. T4 converts to reverse T3 and that's a problem. And if you need a little bio lesson, you can go back and listen to my podcasts because I have a ton of them on reverse T3. I have one called why you're fat and tired on T4 only. Just out there and blatant, right? Because if you're on T4 only, there's a high probability, or if you're on a really, really high dose of T4, there's a high probability that that T4 will convert over into reverse T3. That's why we always, always test reverse T3. Because if that is elevated, your body will go into survival mode. When you're in survival mode, your body's not going to burn fat. T2 does not convert to reverse T3. Now, some T3 can convert to T2. Now, think about this. Remember, if I could draw for you, I would. Think of a little ball with three little balls on it, right? Those are your little iodine atoms. T3 can easily have the body remove one of those iodine atoms where T3 becomes T2, but that's okay because T2 is still metabolically active. It's still going to produce the same effects of T3 Without the, as some people experience, I will not say side effects, some people experience without the stimulatory effects of T3. So I know some of you, and it's very, very rare, but you are out there and some of you are my patients, very, very sensitive to T3, very sensitive. There are a few of you that can't even take 2.5 micrograms of T3. 
You get hyped up. You get jittery. You feel like you're crawling out of your skin. You're getting heart palpitations. That's the cardiovascular effect of T3. Now, there could be other things going on. We got to check your adrenals. We have to check your gut. There are other things going on that make you that sensitive. But if you are very, very sensitive to T3, or maybe you're one that you're kind of going up in your dose of T3 and you're hitting, let's say, 10 micrograms in the morning and 10 in the afternoon. And when you add that extra five to try to go to 15 and 10 or try to go to 15 and 15, like we like to do and split dosing your T3, that's when you say, oh, no, that's not right. That's not good. I don't feel good. I, I feel off. I feel jittery. My heart's beating too fast. That's where we can hold you at that dose of T3 that you can tolerate and add in T2 to get the benefits without that jittery, I'm not going to say side effect, without that jittery effect of increasing the T3. Now, most of you do find increasing the T3. And yes, you can add in T2 with T3, with T4. If you're on T4 only, if you're on T4 and T3, if you're on T3 only, you can add in T2. Why? Because it is naturally produced by your thyroid gland. It is a natural produced hormone. We usually talk about T3 and T4, mainly because there are not yet assays, labs, to measure T2. Now, there are in the studies, in all the literature and all the studies that are out there, obviously they are measuring levels of T2. Because we can actually measure levels of T2 in pregnant women. In pregnancy, we see very, very low levels of T2 because what the body will do, and our bodies are smart. Remember, I always say that our bodies are so smart. What the body will do is it will drop the levels of T2 to preserve fat, to protect the baby. Because our bodies know that T2 is metabolically active and that it increases basal metabolic rate. So it's going to drop in pregnancy because you don't want to be burning fat like a rock star when you're trying to grow life inside of you. And our body knows that. So we see lower levels and don't be looking for a test online because there's not. Alta doesn't have it. Your doctor would have no idea how to order it. These are just testing for research purposes only, for studies only. However, when we do look at the T2 levels in pregnant women, they are lower. We also see post-thyroidectomy. Obviously, we remove the thyroid, all of your hormone levels are going to be lower. But post-thyroidectomy, we see a drop in T2 when we measure because it is naturally produced by the thyroid gland. Now, with a thyroidectomy, you've heard me say over and over and over again that you need all thyroid hormones. We cannot remove the thyroid gland and then just give you T4. Your thyroid wants Produce T4 and T3 when it was in, when it was active, when it was in. Then let's go through the logic. And this is me bitching a little bit. Let's go through the logic. We remove the thyroid gland and then you give a person T4. That doesn't make sense because your thyroid gland is also responsible for part of the conversion of T4 to T3, the active thyroid hormone. Now, here's the thing with a thyroidectomy. If you are stuck and we're not working together and you're stuck with a doctor who has zero clue about the thyroid and they give you T4, which they most likely will do post-thyroidectomy or radioactive iodine treatment, they give you T4 and then they send you on your way. Good luck, Susie. Good luck with that 20 pounds that you just gained. I know you're tired, but T4 will be fine. Add in T2. Because even if your doctor has zero clue about the thyroid and you are stuck on T4, at least you can add in T2 and feel a little bit better because that's not being produced anymore either because your thyroid gland is gone. So we see it low in pregnancy. We see it low in thyroidectomies. Obviously, everything is low after a thyroidectomy. Okay, I don't want to miss anything here. So I'm going back through my notes. Going back through my notes. So like I said... It's more, T2 is more relevant than T3 and T4 because it does not affect thyroid hormone levels. No change in TSH, free T3, free T4, although it is considered an active thyroid hormone. So you don't want to take it till you're blue in the face, just like you wouldn't want to take handfuls of T3, right? When we look at stimulatory and we look at T3, T3 has a, we can't put it in the same category as like caffeine, Phentermine, ephedra. Remember ephedra back in the day. Those are, are stimulating drugs, supplements, medication, whatever. T3 
T3 does have a stimulatory effect because it's increasing everything. It is increasing your metabolism. It is. It has a cardiovascular effect where your heart rate goes up. That's why we use vitals to measure your response to thyroid hormone, any thyroid hormone, not just T3. We use vitals. We use your body temp. We use your heart rate and your blood pressure to actually make sure they go up. Going up when we start administering thyroid hormone replacement therapy treatment because you are diagnosed hypo, those levels going up, those markers, those vital signs going up is actually a good thing. It's not a bad thing. So sometimes I'll get a you know, message from somebody, oh my God, my heart rate is up. I go, what is it? They're like it's 80. And I go, well, that's normal because you were once so low before, it was probably 50. Your body thought you were damn near dead because you were so hypo low and slow. So we want to see those go up. So T3 will have a powerful boom, 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 boom. Within a couple days, within a week, we'll see those numbers start to bump up. We should at least. And if they don't, that tells us time to go up again. With T2, you're not going to necessarily, unless over a long course of time, see that have a stimulatory effect on your heart rate, on your pulse. Well, your pulse is your heart rate. On your body temperature, on your blood pressure. One of the reasons why ephedra was pulled from the market is people are having heart attacks. That is a stimulatory supplement. It directly impacts your body temperature. That's why, you know, you sweat. You're like, oh my God, I'm so hot all the time. Your heart feels like it's racing. You look down at your Apple Watch. You're at like 170 while you're walking the dog. That's not good. That is too stimulating. Now that does happen to some people, the sensitive ones on T3, but T2 doesn't do that. It does not have that cardiovascular effect, that stimulatory effect. You don't want to take it till you're blue in the face though. You know, you don't want to overdo anything. Just don't like, I don't want you to take a handful of T3 because you think you need more. So you increase it by 50 micrograms all in one day. I don't want you to take hand, hand, handfuls of T2 either. We want to take it and allow it to work over time. But it will work. Most people will feel, and I use air quotes, feel the effects of T2 within the first couple weeks of use. They'll feel more energy, and we're going to get it, get into the ATP production and the mitochondria effect here in a minute. They'll feel the energy. They will feel the, the effect on their body composition as clothes fit a little bit better. As your body gets a little bit tighter, you will feel it, air quotes, over time, but really in the, in the first two to four weeks, I would say, for most people. So back to the mitochondria and energy, because some of you are like, I don't need to burn fat. Not many of you are like, I don't need to burn fat, but some of you are like, I don't need to burn fat, but my energy is in the toilet. And I have met with patients when we first start working together, you know, we go through symptoms. What are your biggest symptoms that drive you batshit crazy? And they will say some, some people list weight. Most, I would say 80% list weight as the number one, 20% goes, it's that damn fatigue. I cannot stand being this tired. I cannot get going during the day. T2 increases the synthesis of ATP from the mitochondria. So it has a direct effect on your mitochondria to produce more energy. Now, again, not stimulating energy. This isn't drinking a couple of cups of coffee to get going in a day. This is cellular energy. This is cell power. I've had a couple guests on the podcast talk about mitochondria and the thyroid and how those two go together. And the reason why a thyroid patient or someone with low thyroid hormone production, whether you've been diagnosed or not, has very low energy is because the mitochondria and that ATP synthesis slows down. Remember, hypo is low and slow. Low and slow everything. Low and slow metabolism, low and slow gut motility. That's why you're constipated. Low and slow mitochondrial function. That's why you're tired. Low and slow hair growth. That's why your hair won't grow past your shoulders and you're losing it and it's breaking and I could go on and on. Everything is low and slow. 
So we want to increase that ATP production at the cell level so that you feel that normal just flow of energy through the day, that nice steady flow of energy, not highs and lows, not I drank a couple cups of coffee and now I'm jittery and I'm woo flying through the day and then I crash. And we've all had that crash before too, where it's like 2 p.m. and you are dead tired, dead tired. That's what's nice about keeping that ATP production, keeping your mitochondria healthy, is because you have that nice, consistent energy through the day. Back to the muscle tissue. Remember I was saying I want those cap shoulders. T2 is important for muscle as it actually activates muscle tissue, which is also responsible for fat burning. So when you, T2 is lacking, you have less muscle activity. When you take T2, and I know you're going to roll your eyes, but this is in the study, so I'm not making this up. When you take T2, it actually makes the muscles act like you're exercising. Now, again, I'm not saying to sit around. I want you to go to the gym and lift heavy shit. I want you to pick up weights. I do not want you on your Peloton for an hour a day. I want you, well, I mean, it's better than sitting around, I guess, but I want you going to the gym and lifting. I really, really do. But when you add in T2, you're going to get double the power. You're going to see more muscle definition. You're going to see your muscles kind of boop and pop up. Now, that's also adequate levels of testosterone are required, but T2 makes your muscles act like you're exercising. So when T2 is present, you get the benefits of exercise without exercise, and then you get triple the benefits if you do go and lift heavy shit. How about that? When T2 is lacking, muscle tone is not present, meaning you're going to look squishy. Even if you are going to the gym and you're like, what the heck? I'm deadlifting. I'm squatting. I'm doing heavy shoulder presses. I'm doing CrossFit. I'm doing powerlifting. And I'm not seeing muscle tone. Could be low T2. Back to the fat burning, how we measure basal metabolic rate, how we measure what you are, the energy that you are burning at rest or during exercise. I'm sure you've seen videos or maybe you've even participated in a study like this where you're walking and you have to wear a big mask, right? And they're measuring your O2 output. You're measure, they are measuring how much, how much oxygen, say that five times fast, how much oxygen is consumed at any given time. So T2 will increase oxygen consumption, which we know is directly tied back to burning more fat. Increased metabolism equals increased oxygen consumption. Increased oxygen consumption equals increased metabolism. And then as that oxygen consumption goes higher, we burn more body fat. And the O2 consumption with T2 is higher than the O2 consumption with T3. Now, listen, I, I, I love T3. I, I love it. I love it. I do not want you to get the idea that I am anti-T3. I am pro-T3. As many of you know, I'm on T3 only. You would have to pry it out of my dead cold hands to take it away. T2 is not going to take its place, but I also know because I've actually been using T2 with my patients for years. That's a whole other story. I know it works. I know it helps. I use it with myself too. So even on T3, and even though I am in optimization land, I've been optimized for years now, and that's my goal for you, I will throw in T2 whenever, let's say I go on a trip, I ate too much. It's the holidays. Um, I was sick and couldn't work out for a week and was eating comfort foods like it was going out of style, eating those Oreos that I can't say no to. I will add in T2, even if it's just for a week. Now, you want to use it for longer, but I always have it on hand just to boost fat burning, to boost my bas basal metabolic rate, to boost my metabolism so that I can burn off what I just ate. And again, I have to be careful. I'm not saying that you can use T2 and go eat your face off and be okay. That is not what I'm saying 
like at all. At all. So please don't do that. But that is how I use it because I am optimized. So if you're optimized, use it as a safety net. If you're not optimized yet, use it to get there, to get to your goals, to burn more body fat, to increase energy production. Something else T2 does. See, this this little man boy is kind of it's kind of amazing. It also affects blood sugar control and insulin resistance. So we can measure in studies. When T2 levels are low, there is increased insulin resistance. There is less blood sugar and glucose control. Now, you've heard me say that the double whammy to metabolism is low thyroid hormone and insulin resistance. The triple whammy to your metabolism or your ability to burn fat is low thyroid hormone, insulin resistance, and low testosterone. So if we can knock out two of those and you address the third, the low T somehow else, injections, creams, my hormone fixer, whatever, don't walk around with low testosterone, but that's another topic for another day. If we can knock out two of these by improving thyroid function, by increasing ATP, by increasing your basal metabolic rate, and then improving insulin resistance, that's amazing. Now, would I use T2 on its own for insulin resistance? Probably not. It would all depend on where you're falling. And you hear me talk about optimal insulin levels all the time. I like insulin less than six. I like your A1C between a 4.8 and 5.1. Glucose, glucose can lie, but we also don't want you having a fasting glucose of like 120. That's a huge red flag. So I really like fasting glucose, like an 86 to a 90. If it's above that, though, I don't say, oh my gosh, you have insulin resistance because you have a fasting glucose of 95. I'm going to look at your insulin, your A1C. Would I use it by itself if you're rolling in with an insulin of a 15? No, no, not at all. We would want to use berberine. We would want to use metformin, maybe a little bit of inositol. But this could be another layer in the treatment protocol that could help big time help. T2 is also renal protective and results in better blood sugar control and lower cholesterol. I heard a a thyroid practitioner talk about this where he had a, a, a rash of thyroid patients come in, a rash, two, three of them, but TSH levels close to 100. That's why I say a rash, because we don't see that on a day-to-day basis. So to see two or three come in like boom, 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 one after the other, that's a lot. That's a lot. So TSH levels over 100. Cholesterol levels, which you know I don't normally care about because the cholesterol lab, standard lab value range used to go to 300. Now it's down to 200 because they want to dish out statins like it's candy. But instead of putting these people on statins because we know thyroid has a direct effect on cholesterol. Thyroid has a direct effect on insulin. Insulin has an effect on cholesterol. So when we improve thyroid production, when we improve thyroid function, when we improve your thyroid hormone, I can't say thyroid function because if you have a thyroidectomy, there is no thyroid functioning. When we improve thyroid hormone levels, then we see improvement in cholesterol. So these people coming in with TSHs of 100 or close to 80, 70, 80, 100, they had horrible cholesterol. Cholesterol was like 400. We, in see, we saw improvements, the studies saw improvements of cholesterol numbers while administering T2. So we're bringing, yes, they got thyroid hormone treatment too to bring down that TSH. I don't know what kinds. I didn't ask. But we did see lower cholesterol as well. Another study, and this is the big one. This is the big one because it was placebo controlled and done on humans. You know, a lot of these studies, and this goes for anything, you have to look at with a grain of salt. And one thing I learned over the years at looking at PubMed and Google Scholar and and Sci-Hub and everywhere you go to find these long studies and really read through them, you have to look for biases. So you have to break down studies and look for biases. When you're looking for biases, you want to look for things like, so if you go on PubMed and you try to look up positive studies for T3, 
There are very few, but there's a lot on how T4 monotherapy, meaning T4 only, works so well. Okay, where's the money trail? Where's the money behind those studies? Drug manufacturers, Synthroid. When you're looking at studies, you have to look at, okay, the effects that were done in animals. And listen, we start on rats. We don't want to start on humans. Because what if there's an adverse effect? Better to kill a rat than a human. What's that organization? I don't want, not Puma. What's what's the animal rights organization? Please don't yell at me for saying it's better to kill a rat than a human because it is. I'd rather kill a rat than a human. So we start on rats and this is where we're finding, you know, 3,5-diodo-L-thyronine activates brown adipose tissue thermogenesis in hypothyroid rats. Boom. Done. Studies carried out in rats fed a diet high in fat and subject to long-term treatments with T2 showed a reduction in adiposity, that means fat, and in body weight without the onset of thyrotoxic effects. So we start with animals, and then we break down those studies. We move the studies to human trials, and then we look for the biases. So like I said, you won't find too many studies with positive effects of T3 because Synthroid, I guess, I don't know, is the manufacturer of Cytomel, brand Cytomel, not throwing money at these studies? Or maybe they're just like, ah, we know our shit works. We're good. Right? So you're not going to see very many studies on T2 because it's not a drug. Now, you will find a little bit of T2 in natural desiccated thyroid medication because it's produced by the thyroid gland naturally. So when we remove the thyroid gland from a pig and we dry it out and we break it up and we put it in a pill for you, we mainly measure T4 and T3 in that NDT medication, but there is a little bit of T2. But we don't see a lot of push for NDT meds out there in the literature, in the medical literature, in the scientific literature. Just like you're not going to see a lot of push for T2 in the scientific literature because it comes in supplement form, not in drug form. So you can get it in a supplement. That's why I made it for you. It's what's in my thyroid fixer. We're going to get to that in a second. You can get it in a supplement form. I've been using it in supplement form for 15 years now. With myself and my patients, and again, that's another side funny story, funny story, but I have been using it for about 15 years, finally manufactured it for you in my fixer line, but you're not going to see a ton of human trials on it yet because it's not in a drug unless it's an NDT. The study that was done on humans that I was talking about, This one's the bomb. This one showed incredibly strong and promising results. It was a placebo-controlled group, meaning there was a group that did not receive T2. This group did receive T2. For 28 days, hold on to your panties, resulted in a nine-pound spontaneous fat loss. This occurred with no changes to TSH, T4, T3 levels, and no cardiac side effects were seen. This was a human trial. Nine pounds, average, average of, we have to say average of, average of nine pounds in 28 days, meaning the people that were given and administered T2 for 28 days, some lost four pounds, some lost 12 pounds. The average was nine pounds. You have to remember that T2 is a pro-hormone, just like T3, but it doesn't break down muscle, A. We talked about that. And it works strictly on adipose tissue or fat tissue. T2 will convert to T3 on an as-needed basis. This is going back to our bodies being smart. So if you're low in T3, your body will take T2 and it will stick on an iodine atom to make T3. So just like your body can remove one from T3 to make T2, it can also stick one on to convert T2 to T3. But it does not convert to reverse T3 like T4 does. It does not convert to reverse T3. All right. 
A couple more studies I want to go over. Do, 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 do. This one, 3,5-diodo-L-thyronine, T2, is capable of increasing energy expenditure as well as preventing high-fat diet-induced overweight and related metabolic dysfunction. What does that mean? It means if you get now high-fat diet, you need to break that down because many of you might be on a high-fat diet, i.e. the ketogenic diet. When they're doing high-fat diets in studies, it is super physiological high in fat to induce fat gain, to induce body weight increases. This particular study showed the effects of giving T2 at the mitochondrial level in liver and skeletal muscle. They saw a rapid increase in O2 respiration rate that is independent of transcription or translation mechanisms, an increase in the fatty acid oxidation rate, activation of thermogenic processes, thermogenesis, burning of fat, burning energy. T2 rapidly stimulates the metabolic rate and prevents high fat diet induced overweight, meaning giving a ton of fat in the diet, which would normally in any other given situation increase your body fat. Your body would lay down fat because fat is good. Let's say this. Good fat is good fat. Good fat helps your body burn fat. I want you to eat good fat. But just like ketogenic diets can go sideways, and some of you are like, I did keto before and I gained weight. Well, maybe you did dirty keto. So if I give you, listen, I can make you gain weight with just fat. I can give you bacon. I can give you cheese. I can give you heavy whipping cream in in three cups of your coffee in the morning, just pouring that on in. If I really, really, really increase your fat intake, you're going to lay down some fat. Even if you are carbohydrate free, you are still going to lay down some fat because the amount of, and I rarely say this word calories, the amount of calories, the amount of energy that you're putting into your body is so over the top of what your body can handle. It has no choice but to store that food as fat. So when we give T2, we actually can see a prevention of fat accumulation even when given a high, high, high fat diet. Now, I should dive into, honestly, I should really dive into what kind of fat they used in there. I don't even know if it says, but I really have to dig into that. Last one. Last one. This one showed, I'm trying to get the good stuff. Two youth thyroid subjects volunteered to undergo T2 administration. So there's another human trial just on two. Body weight, body mass index, blood pressure, heart rate, electrocardiogram, thyroid, liver, uh, ultrasonography, glycemia, total cholesterol, triglycerides, free T3, free T4, T2, TSH, and resting metabolic rate, which is similar to BMR, basal metabolic rate, were evaluated at baseline at the end of the treatment. Resting metabolic rate increased significantly in each subject. After continuing the T2 treatment for a further three weeks, body weight was reduced significantly by 4%, while the serum levels of free T3, free T4, and TSH were unchanged. No side effects were observed at the cardiac level in either subject. No significant change was observed in the same subjects taken in placebo. So this was another placebo design study. Administration of T2 counteracted the occurrence of metabolic disorders like metabolic syndrome that goes back to blood sugar control and insulin resistance. And high cholesterol is also tied to metabolic syndrome. No negative side effects on the thyroid axis or at the cardiac level. Together with an increased base of metabolic rate and decreased body weight, were observed in two youth thyroid subjects who underwent T2 administration. And this just repeats it. Serum levels of free T3, free T4, and TSH resulted unchanged in these patients. T2 has been proposed as a potential therapeutic agent in obesity. And listen, right now, I mean, this actually, 
this paragraph led one of the studies, and I 100% agree with it. The research field concerning the control of energy metabolism by the thyroid is no longer restricted to T3 since growing evidence indicates that some of its derivatives could have significant biological effects among these three, five, diodo, L, thyronine, T2, plays a significant role. With the, uh, with the need for effective and safe anti-obesity drugs in face of the obesity pandemic worldwide, recent interventions revealed that 3,5-diodo-L-thyronine, 3,5-T2, interventions revealed that this T2 is a metabolically active iodothyronine affecting energy and lipid metabolism without thyromimetic side effects typically associated with T3 administration. Now, I don't like them bashing on T3, but let's face it, some of you do respond and cannot increase your dose of T3. You can't get an increase in dose of T3. You're working with a doctor that won't increase your T3, or you just simply can't go up any higher. Or maybe your levels are optimal and you're like, ah, damn it, I still can't lose weight and I still don't have an increase in energy. Well, we're going to add in some T2. Oh my goodness. So the 3,5-diodo-L-thyronine, that is what is in the thyroid fixer. Here's the deal with thyroid products out there. And yes, this is proprietary and one of a kind. My thyroid fixer. I'm very proud of this. It's like my baby. Hormone fixer is like a twin because I love them both so much. And we're seeing such crazy, amazing results with both of them. But thyroid fixer was the first born. Normally, when you see a thyroid supplement, what do you see? Magnesium, selenium, iodine. Listen, I love iodine. I love magnesium. I think too many thyroid supplements put in too much selenium because most of you are taking it like 200 milligrams of selenium a day and it's pushing your selenium too high and you're increasing your reverse T3 and you're taking it because you read it on Google or you saw some kind of info ad. But most thyroid supplements are these combinations of conversion ingredients that help push conversion. That's not a bad thing. But like I said, some of you, the selenium goes too high you're not dealing with the type of iodine that's in it very well. Thyroid fixer is not that. It is not that. It contains zero selenium. Go get your selenium from Brazil nuts. Go take a, 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 a magnesium that will help you go to the bathroom and help you sleep. I'm not going to put that in here because I want you taking this in the morning so that you can have energy through the day. And again, not stimulating energy. This is not the kind of false energy that you get from caffeine or from ephedra. This is a nice slow burn energy. This is going to gradually increase your energy. Although if you take it at night because of its effect on the mitochondria, because of its effect on ATP production, it could keep you awake. This could be a very, very, it will be a very, very powerful ingredient in your arsenal in trying to lose body fat, in trying to improve energy, in protecting your muscle tissue, in increasing muscle tone, in balancing out blood sugar, having better insulin control, having better glucose control, protecting your renal function, dot, dot, dot. A ton, a ton, a ton of benefits. Tons of benefits. By the way, just as a side note, the other thing I put into thyroid fixer is L-tyrosine. So you're going to see T2 is 3,5-diodo-L-thyronine. There's also L-tyrosine, which is an amino acid that is very, very beneficial to the thyroid gland. That is a podcast in and of itself. Totally separate. Totally separate. Okay. So I said, well, first of all, I'm going to get to your questions. And just stay on because I know I promised a discount code, which I'm going to give to you at the very end. So I want to get to your questions first. Anyone can take T2, correct? With or without thyroid issues? Yes. So this is going to be a good and bad example at the same time. If we look at the bodybuilding community, if we, if we look at athletes, if we look at gym goers, 
which I am and was. So no judgment because that is and was me. When you're competing, when you're training hard, when you want to get the best shape, the best aesthetic look to your body, you want to use supplements that actually are going to work. When we look in the bodybuilding realm, and I have seen pro bodybuilders interviewed who refuse to take or, i.e. abuse, T3 because they know that if they take it, number one, they can induce a hypothyroid problem because of the feedback loop and basically shutting down their own thyroid production. And then they do have, then they do have a thyroid problem. Like they've given themselves a thyroid problem because they abused T3 to lose weight for a show. And now, oh, look, your own thyroid gland has shit the bed. Now you have to be on thyroid medication. That doesn't happen with T2. So I've seen pro bodybuilders interviewed and they say, listen, I do not take T3 to get ready for a show. I take T2. I do not give, especially my women clients who they train, I do not give them T3. I do not allow them to take T3. I do not let them abuse T3 because it will strip their muscle down and they will shut down their own thyroid production and then they're going to be 40 pounds heavier after a show. And the next time they want to do a show, they're going to have some issues. So they take or give T2. So these are, this is T2 given to non-thyroid patients. Totally healthy, just needing to lean out, burn body fat, and get in the best shape of their life. So yes, it can be taken with or without thyroid issues because there are no thyroid mimetic effects and it's not going to tank or change your thyroid hormone levels. Now, again, like I said, I'm just using common sense, common biological sense. If I give you T4 only, which sucks, long enough, your TSH is going to change. So if your TSH is a 4 and I put you on T4... And this is the problem with conventional medicine, right? This is a problem that many of you are facing right now. And I give you T4, your TSH is going to go down. And if that's the only thing that we measure, your doctor goes, oh, look, you're good, but you're still suffering with side effects, or you're still suffering with symptoms. Symptoms. You haven't lost weight. And this is my story. Remember, I was there. Five months on T4 only. That's all I gave it. Didn't lose weight. Didn't feel better. No increase in energy. Hair still falling out. Still constipated. But that TSH moved. So if if you are a perfect, like healthy, no issues with your thyroid whatsoever patient, and you're just like, I can't burn fat, I can't lose weight, I would still argue, hey, let's look at your insulin, let's look at your testosterone too, and let's let's make sure and test all your thyroid hormones and make sure that there's not a problem. Because undiagnosed thyroid numbers, stats are in the millions. Last thing, I, last time I heard, I think 16 million are undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. Those are the Band-Aids. You don't have a thyroid problem. You, you're stalling your head and you need an antidepressant and a blood pressure medication and a statin. But now, back to my point, you might see a little bit of a reduction in TSH. Again, biological sense. Does it biologically make sense? If I get a T2 and some of that T2 can turn into T3, that is going to have an effect on your TSH. So there might be a little bit of an effect. Maybe you go from a 2 to a 1 or a 0.5. Again, not a big deal because you're not going hyper. And we don't call that hyper. We look at your free T3 and your free T4, which is going to remain unchanged unless that T2 converts to T3 and then you might get a little bit above a bump in your free T3, which is not a bad thing because you want to be in that upper quadrant of the range. Another listener says, been on thyroid fixer and hormone fixer for a week, feeling good and maybe down a pound or two. What? And this is why it's my babies. These are my babies because I love them both and we are hearing such amazing, amazing, amazing reports, just like yours. And this is a brand new one. So thank you for bouncing that in, Amy. This is a brand new one, brand new report, but this is very much in line with everything that we're hearing 
about both thyroid hormone or thyroid fixer and hormone fixer. The twins. We'll call them the twins. Emily says, just started thyroid fixer. Can't wait for results. You have to keep me updated, Em. Does supplementing with T2 raise blood pressure? Really good question. No studies have been done. And again, when they say there are no thyromimetic effects, there are no cardiovascular effects, I'm going to tie in blood pressure to that. So it should not, based on the literature, it should not. Now, just let's all remember that we are all very unique individuals. So just like I can take 150 micrograms of T3 and Susie Q can't even take 2.5, that shows you how our bodies respond to things so differently, so, so differently. So you have to take, you know, if you have a, a response to it over time, and you have a slight increase in blood pressure, number one, make sure that there are no outside factors influencing it. Look at yourself as an individual and then do that trial and error. Go off of it, take your blood pressure. This is just hypothetical. Let's say your blood pressure goes up. Go off of it, take your blood pressure. Mm, Oh, it went down. Now go back on. Oh, it went up. Okay, well then it's that thing. It's not an outside force. But to answer your question, Linda, it should not. Okay, and let me keep going. Just started thyroid fix for this week. Oh, PETA. Thank you, Danielle. I couldn't I couldn't think of it. What did I say? I don't even know what I said. Yeah, PETA, don't be mad just because I said about the rats. Is it safe to take your thyroid fixer if I am already on armor and not optimal? Absolutely. My doctor is just going by the standard ranges to determine that I am normal, and she puts that in air quotes. Absolutely. So here's the thing, Michelle. With armor, it contains a little bit of T2, but you might need more. Now, I don't know your dose. I don't know your numbers. That that really is important because, again, if your doctor is going by the standard ranges, I'm going to guess that your doctor is not even testing free T3, is not even testing reverse T3, if that is correct. So when you're taking armor, remember that you're taking T4. We want to make sure that that T4 does not convert over to reverse T3. Should we be taking one? So yes, Michelle, back to your question. Yes, you can add in thyroid fixer. It's not going to change those numbers and make your doctor go, you're hyper, but it will help with your symptoms because there's only a teeny tiny amount of T2 in, in armor in any NDT. And goodness, I mean, Michelle, if you're only on, let's say 30 Or even, and it depends on you and what you need. Let's say you're on 60 milligrams of armor. That might not be enough either. 30 definitely is not enough. Just like five micrograms isn't enough for my dog of T3. 30 milligrams of armor, probably not enough for you or most people. Should we be taking one or two capsules? Start with one and then increase to two. We always want to assess tolerance. And again, not that there is a stimulatory effect, but just always start with one. Yes, it definitely is in stock. I know it sold out. The very first day it was released, we we sold out of everything. And then there was supply chain issues and bottle issues. It's supposed to be in a white bottle. It's in a clear bottle because the white bottles came in all damaged because they were on a boat. God knows how long. Not the supplement, just the bottles. The supplements were not on a boat heating up. The core ingredients we got, we had, and then we were ready to release. And then it's like, oh, all the white bottles are damaged. How to take it? Start with one, go up to two. Assessing tolerance and take it in the morning. That's your answer, Ian. Danielle says, I've been working on upping my T3 dose. This week by five micrograms twice a day. Should I back off of raising while starting thyroid fixer? I don't want too much going on at once. Does that question make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, so let's say, this is a good one. So let's say you are increasing your T3. So let's say you're at 10 and five now. And you're going to hold that. Don't back off. Hold your dose and always go by the, the schedule that you're practitioner is laid out for you in increasing your T3 and just add in the T2 because it's not going to like fire you up and make you jittery. You're not going to go out of your mind and, and, and 
be crawling out of your skin with anxiety. It, it's really not. So you can add that in while increasing your T3 just fine. And if you do start to get jittery, then you would back off on the T3. So you take all three supplements together. So Nikki, you're probably talking about hormone fixer, thyroid fixer, blood sugar fixer. You can take them all together, but here's the thing. And again, this is, you always want to take any supplement, even though this is thyroid fixer, you want to take it a one hour away from your thyroid medication, any supplement. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it says thyroid on it. You take it one hour away from your thyroid medication. Now, whether you take multiple supplements together is dependent on your gut. So I can pop a handful of supplements that does not affect my stomach. Some people, if they take one supplement on an empty stomach, it's going to affect them. So how you space that out is going to be up to you. Okay. And uh, I just answered your question, Amy, away from food or other supplements. So no, you do not have to take, obviously, away from my thyroid meds. Boom. Right. So obviously, you do not have to take thyroid fixer on an empty stomach because I don't want it upsetting your stomach, but you could certainly try. You can certainly try and see how you do. Because there are sometimes, I mean, there are some people that they struggle even taking T3 on an empty stomach. So we have them dissolve it under their tongue just because their gut is such a mess. They just react to everything that they put on it. Can you take thyroid fixer and will it help you if you're on T4? Whoa, yes. You have to go back and watch this from the beginning. I, I talk about that. Definitely if you're on T4 only because I hate T4 only and T4 only does not work. And T4 will convert to reverse T3. T2 does not convert to reverse T3. So I would definitely throw it in because you're not going to see symptom relief with T4 only. You're just not. You're just not. And I'm so sorry that you're on T4 only. Last question. Can we take T2 at the same time as a thyroid glandular? Glad you brought that up because I was talking about thyroid supplements. The mag, the selenium, the iodine. Forgot about the glandulars. Glandulars also contain T4 and T3 in a glandular form, very similar to NDT, right? When you're taking a thyroid glandular, there's a lot of controversy of, are they standardized? Are you getting the same amount in each dose? Could that actually throw off your, your feedback loop? Could it change your numbers so that your doctor goes, oh, you don't have a thyroid problem? Glandulars can do that. Glandulars will change your thyroid numbers where T2 doesn't. So yes, you can add in the same way, Alexandra, as you can add in T2 to your NDT, to your T4 only, to T4 and T3. You can add it in with T3 only because I do. Because it's not converting to reverse T3. It's not like if you give me T4, I'm, I'm going hypo because there goes my reverse T3. But I can take T3 only, add in T2, and just experience increased energy and fat burning. Just shed off those pounds that I put on from being on vacation and eating like garbage. So yes, you absolutely can. Okay, I promised you guys.